Uh, I've just replaced these stairs. Used the old handrail. And these were the old stairs, rotten. Made in that triangular fashion, that dinosaur fashion. I wasn't going to post this, but I'm going to do, because it's more about the layout of the stairs, not the final product, not how it looks in the end. It's like I say, I'm using old dodgy handrail, and I'm building it in a way that I'm not used to, and I'm not keen on. So, here we go. Right, so that's the pergola. And these are the deck steps that I mentioned that won't be pairing. And you see they're made of plank, little triangles on it. And they've notched into the little plank a little bit. I don't build steps like this normally. Because here in England, they tend to just rot. But I would normally build like a little mini deck and then a couple of frames, 6x2 sort of frames on top, you know, stack them, then build another mini deck and a couple of steps coming up to that level. 6x2s stacked up, give a good solid base and they're about the right height for a, a decking board to go across the front. But for this one, I've been asked to save the handrail, reuse that if possible. The balls are going. This is what I'm going to try and do. I say it's new to me, so we'll see how it goes. They just set on flags. If I was to build like little mini decks, I'd have to dig post holes, concrete them in. There's more money than they want to spend on this at the moment because it's all a bit, it's all a bit tired and knackered. Anyway, I'll take this to bits carefully as I can. Right now, I'm just going to be sitting on top of these flags. It slopes away slightly, so I'm going to work to this side, and I'll just have to cut that one a little bit. And steps, stairs, are all about the going and the rise. Those stairs that I took out, they're only little skinny timbers, one, 120s. I'm using slightly wider boards, 147, 150 they are, something like that. Um, I would normally make them a little bit wider than we're going to do. We're just going to use two boards. I like to make them quite gradual decking steps. So you're walking up a slope rather than climbing up a hill, if you know what I mean. But we're just going to use two boards. So I'll work out, I'm going to have like a 20mm nosing on it before the next step. You know, 20mm step up, riser, 20mm back. So I'll work out what distance we're coming out. I'll level it through. And that'll give me my rise. And I'll already have me going by then. So these are the boards, the deck boards that I'm going to use. And there we've got the sort of 5mm gap in between. We've got 295. So each step's going to be about 275. I want them as wide as possible so you can get a foot on a foot not a measurement so 275 look at the old steps I've got one two three four five five two seventy fives so five two seven fives gives me one three seven five what I'll do is mark this on my level this is an 1800 mil level so it should be able to fit on there Right, so whenever you work out a staircase, it's always the face of the riser, top of the tread, not including the nosing, 
face of the visor so imagine you just you just drew a squiggly line that you represent your stairs that's the face of your riser top of your tread face of your riser again so this mark I've put flux with that so from there we've got one three seven five so now that gives me a meter fifty five buffalo so that's me rise, that's me going. I'm going to get my board out that I use for ripping on and lay it out on that. I just went online to see if I can find a picture. I'm editing the video, editing the clips that I've made today. And I can't find one that's how I was taught. It, they're all showing to the nose, in, but that means that you've got to work back then to your riser. So imagine, imagine this is your staircase, this is just a piece of window board. Imagine you, you've got your tread there, your riser, tread, riser, working down like that. They're always set back by a fraction, margin. So let's say that's that. And then... That'd be your tread. And then 90 degrees off that would be your riser. And then this would be your nosing that goes up to the up to the margin. It's a bit big that but you get the idea. If you're working off your nosing for your pitch, you got to work back then for your riser. This is my staircase jig. The face of the riser and the top of the tread is 90 degrees to each other. These bits are tapering back. Let me show you a bit better. These bits are 90 degrees there. You could have a nose in this long, you know, or no nose in at all. See, this one's just a little bit different. So you can't work to that. You've got to imagine that's not there. That's an extra piece. So 90 degrees there. These taper back because then you put wedges in, wedges in from behind. So that, if I can get it right. So I've got my pencil lines there. So that would I'm not quite 90 degrees but that then would be a cutout like that your riser would go in there your next one would be here your riser would go in there your tread would go in here and a wedge in there and a wedge in there so I work to the inside point here not the nosing I guess it doesn't really matter as long as you know what that distance is but then but then you'd be working to that line and you'd have to work backwards anyway I'll get back to it in maybe that makes sense Too much junk in my van to get my trestles out. I'm going to rebuild this one day so all these things can slide in there. So that is 175. So on my board here, I've got a meter 55 to that point. That's my total rise. That's 175, that's bottom. So that's like the nosing of the step for the face of the riser there. What I need is steps coming off like that now. So I need to measure 1375 across there. So I've got 1375 to there. 
but that's to the face of the final riser and that one up there is about six inch so I think I'm gonna make this one about six inch as well and because it slopes I'm gonna end up cutting that one so that will be a bit shorter than that one so I'll measure up here six inch So that's my six inch, I squared it across from the 1375, that's top of my nose in, the step's going to be like that. What I need to do is each of these, imagine that's a straight line, straight up there to that point, across there, straight up there to that point. What I need to do is work out how high each one of those is. which means dividing that by the amount of treads you see that was the 175 I think it was that I measured down to the top tread face of the riser and I've just squared that across there and if my calculations are right that should be 275 there look near enough so I've measured 275, 275, 275, 275, 275. Then these measurements, I followed them through there. So that's that measurement there. That one's that one there. And it's a square board ish. Whatever the factory cut it out. So what I can do now is measure from there to there. Put a mark here. Draw that through, same on this next one, measure from there to there, put a mark here, draw it through. So, I don't know if you can see it, that's what I've ended up with. So I've got one, two, three, four, five steps, and each step is going to be like a dot. Then the riser goes behind. I'm not putting a riser in, but that's where it'd go. Down there. Then your bottom tread would be like that. And you see the the Americans, they just notch out a timber. But the widest timber I could get was six inch. So I'll see what this triangle piece needs to be. And it's more than six inch let me just draw that on so these are the sort of triangles that i'm going to have to create and there pretty much six inch already so imagine me track here is my timber i'm going to end up fixing triangles on again don't like that all right i was just checking my measurements and i had one wrong measured this wrong that one's right down there but that one was wrong but it's right now it's that one I've got work to so what I can do now is transfer those marks over onto here and I haven't got a what the square is get some little stops that go on these so you can set your pitch now I've got a staircase jig at home but it's a similar thing probably do this on the computer at home though so you'd have points down here and that's where you set your jig up to I'll transfer these over transfer them onto the other side so I'll transfer these marks over mark all this on there so I'll have loads of triangles and there should be sort of mirror images to each other. Alright, so I've just ripped it that way. Now just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to cut it on this saw on here. It won't do this one, but it will do that one. So I can set it up and then cut them all. This might seem confusing, but I love geometry. I built loads of deck steps, but like I say, I just build frames, it's easier. 
when I was at college doing my roofing exam, my geometry roofing exam. Examiner took two points off me, he couldn't give me 100% because I didn't label the wall plate. If you join her, you'll understand that. Right, something like that. Got 15 to cut. Like I say, I love geometry. I love building staircases. Just don't like this style with these nasty bits of wood fixed to a plank. Right, so like that. They're out here because I've got this up to there. It should be down there at that point there. Then they'll sit back like that. It's a little bit twisted. That should come over, but yeah. Basically like that. I'm going to have to spike a screw into the bottom here. I'm going to see if I've got a decent coach bolt that will go through here somewhere. And then I think I will put some risers across just to just to stiffen them. I've just marked that. Pick three of the best. And I'll square them over. And I'll try and stick to those when I'm putting these on. So there's three matching. Right, number one. I've got these little... Hundred mil sixes. I'm going to put in here. I ain't got too many of them, but I'm going to put the hundred and twenty mil eights in the top there. I can't have the head showing, so I'm going to try and count the sink them a bit. Stop there because when that tightens it up, I've got my pencil line here. When that tightens it up, it might pull it that way, so I'm going to put this one in a bit as well. <coughs> Quite big, these. Too big. I'm just going to put these in all of them. I might have to go get some more though. Now that's in. Move on to the next one. Like I say, try and stick to my pencil lines. And these timbers, because of the way I cut them, I've got the treated side on there, so that'll be going down. So it'll be treated underneath. Just up to me to get plenty of treatment on these now. Tighten that up, move my way down. Making a dinosaur. That top should just be 90 degrees from that top tread. And I'm going to scribe the bottoms because it's a funny shape. I'll stand them up and scribe them down to the floor.
Right, so something like that. What I'll do is make sure they're level. And then whatever they need to come down, these need to be just about there. Whatever they need to come down, I'll scribe the bottom legs. I'll pack them up so they're all straight and level. It's a bit like what they do in a house like that. And that's probably the way I would build them if I was building these. Because that central support there, that one, it was it was against nothing. See how clean and it is. There's nothing, no leg in the middle there. But I'm going to build it the same way as it was. So these are going to go up against those posts. Same that one. And then I'll have to, <laughs> don't know, put another post in, put a rail on. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm going to get some treatment on those, have a cup of tea, then I'll get some more treatment on when that's soaked in a bit. Level them, scribe them down. And when I say if I was building these, of course I'm building these, but we ain't got a lot of space here. To leave them as they are would mean another step at the bottom here. We haven't really got the space. They didn't want it coming out any further than it needed to, so they've got to go down. Right, so they're sat upside down at the moment while well, I get some treatment on those ends. That's what I'm going to do. I've got a spare piece of this 6x2, so I'm going to bolt that across there. And I think I'll sit these on rather than pushing it up against, because they're quite a shallow pitch. I think sitting on rather than leaning against like a normal staircase would. I think. Then it doesn't drift like that. Oh. We'll see. Right, so I just had to whip a corner off down there just so I can get it down but that's level and I want this top edge to finish here this top rail's quite level or the top, top deck should I say that's what I'll do 150mm I'll measure up down there 150mm cut it off Then when that one's down, I'll make sure this one's level, like I've done there, and level across, and cut that bottom one there, and they both should drop down. And once I've got the outsides pretty much where they want to be, I'll decide whether I'm just going to notch around underneath there and put a timber across so it's sat on top of them. This top one will be floating then though, it'll be sat on it but it'll be floating. Like I say, it's quite a shallow pitch. I'm worried that it'll do that if I just lean them against it like it is now. I think sitting down on that timber will be better. Got a pencil mark there, pencil mark there, that's 150mm up here and there. I'll whip that off. I would have liked that to be sat on something. I think, yeah, we'll see, I'll cut it off, we'll see. I'd have preferred to, for it to be down here, so that's sat in the, sat on the flag. So it's a lot of that, isn't it? That bolt was right where I was going to cut. If you look at, look at me drawing, this one was always going to be a bit smaller. with that timber there oh, I think that looks a bit shit but I've got some concrete in the van so I'll just get some underneath there that one can keep sliding down but I'm gonna find an off cut I'm gonna notch these that much so that these timbers are sat on this rail that I'm going to put in here. Uh, While well, I'm putting that rail on, just get some treatment on these. You see, I've had to fix this one from underneath. So, they're just notched over there. I screwed them in. Coach bolts, coach screws on the inside. 
I've just spiked that one. And by the time it gets top on, and possibly a riser. Still haven't decided on that yet. And like I say, I'm going to get some concrete under these. It's flags that have been down for ages, just concrete over them. Right, it's tea time again. Well, I've put some treatment on there, letting it dry off a little bit. We'll just set the boards on, just, just to see, see what it's like. And what I've learned from this is, if there's no riser on, don't stick a big bolt through the front. See there? Take this cut down here into account a bit more. I think I'm going to end up putting a, a riser on. I'm sort of hanging fire a little bit, waiting for woman to get home. See what she thinks. They didn't want it on originally. They didn't want a riser on it originally. Just like the old one didn't have one on. I will see. I wouldn't mind stiffening these a little bit. Right, that's a three coats of treatment on it. You see it's puddling in there. That's all I can do. Like I say, this piece underneath here is treated already. I'll put a bit on the coat screws. And that looks low at the front, but actually that measures 150. That's 145, so it's slightly out, but that's because I scribe it to the floor. So we're going to put risers on the front. But I'll let that dry for a little bit. And then I can start screwing boards on. I've got new new newel posts to go on. We're not using these, they're rotten on the bottom. But I've got to try and reuse the spindles and the handrail. Right, I've concreted that. It's a good two inch down there. It's about an inch and a half here. And I've sloped it forward a little bit. And it's just to the base. It'll support it. Whether it'll help it rot or not, I don't know. I'll put plenty of treatment underneath, so... We'll see. Right, now they've forgot about these nail posts. I was just going to bolt it onto the side in the end, but no, I decided... I dug an hole. That's a good... Oh, eight or nine inches deep. Once it's bolted to this, it'll be alright. I'm limited to how much I can come down anyway to get the handrail on. That's one post cut in half. I'll get that one in and get a bit of this cement around it. Yeah, 10 inch at least. And then Handrail should be at 900mm to the nosing. And I'm using the old handrail. So I should just be able to get it in there, 900mm. That's going to be going like that. I'd take it through, but I've got the old handrail to deal with. You see the, the way they did it. So I can get that bolted on. Get some concrete around it. So that's what I ended up with. I was going to extend these a little bit and return the ends of this riser. I've only got a little piece like that. I think it'd look a bit crap. I'd want to take it all the way if I did. Never mind. Handrails are going to be attached to that like they were before but then they're going to come past on these right that's it I've used the spindles that were any good the others are too short these ones so they're too short but they're talking about taking every other one of these out anyway there's no kids in this house so they want to be able to see the garden. That's it. It's quite firm, is this?
any wobble is in the old old newels. Not much I can know about that, the rotten at the bottom. Oh. 